Hello and welcome to Pro Tips. I'm Spencer Nugent. I'm a product designer, illustrator, and I'm going to be hanging out with you this morning. Hopefully you're energized, ready to go. We're going to be taking a look at the perspective tool in Adobe Fresco. So I hope you have your iPads ready and you're good to go because we're going to get things started here. Just a sec. Okay. Had a little audio playing through there. So good to see you on Behance. It's been a minute. Happy to be back. Um, feel free to drop any questions as we go as well into the chat. I'll be paying attention to that here on Behance. Strongly encourage you to go there if you have any questions, and I'll be happy to answer for you. All right. So let's switch over here to my iPad. Oops. <laughs> Disconnected there. Apologies. False start. All right. Here we go. Seems to always happen on Fridays, right? Okay. So here's our iPad. This is Adobe Fresco. If you've never used it, check it out. Um, this is just the basic interface, but we're going to go ahead and jump right in and create a new file. So I'm going to tap here, create new in the lower left corner, and that's going to present to me some templates that I can use. So basic sizes, whatever you like to use. I'm going to stick with the tabloid. I like to sketch a little bit wider as well. One more setting I'm going to turn on just so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Let's see, input. I always forget to turn this one on. Show touches. This is going to show a little blue circle on the screen. Don't worry if you don't have that blue circle. It doesn't mean that your app is broken or anything's wrong. It just means I'm trying to show you what I'm doing. Okay, so perspective drawing can be really difficult, even if you're someone who has a bit more experience like myself. Um, it's always nice to have a few helps here and there. And Fresco comes built in with the perspective grid tool. So what we're going to do is look to the right of the screen right here, tap on grids, and we have this precision menu that pops up. So in this precision menu, I have some options. I can turn on snapping if I'm drawing or if I'm transforming something in the app. But there's also this really cool toggle grids. So I'm going to tap on grids just right there, and you should see something pop up on your screen. Now I've been playing with the perspective guide tool myself a little bit, so don't worry if yours doesn't look like this, but we're gonna take a look at some of these options. So under grid type, chances are actually, if you turn on grids, you, you just have the graph, and the graph is just a standard 2D grid that you can use for layouts. I find this particularly helpful if I'm doing something that's uh, architectural in nature, maybe I'm doing a landscape, or there's perhaps a, an interesting perspective that I want to draw with using uh, or for product design. So I'm going to go to perspective right here, and there's a few options under vanishing point. We can select one, two, or three point perspective, right? So one, two, or three point. We're going to start with one point perspective and talk a little bit about it. So one point perspective, as the name implies, shows that we have one vanishing point. Now, what are some situations in which you might see one point perspective? For example, if I'm standing in the middle of a road looking off toward the horizon, I'm going to see the road taper off to a single point, all right? That's one instance in where you might see one point perspective or standing in a hallway or maybe a city street, things like that, right? Pretty familiar. So we're going to draw our own scenes. And to do that, we need to maybe customize a little bit, right? Maybe you have an idea in your head, a thumbnail to start with. So if I go to edit vanishing points and I tap on that, I now have the option, we can pinch and zoom to zoom in here. We now have the option to move this vanishing point around. There's a little teardrop that has appeared right there, okay? I can move the entire grid around, okay? And notice what happens when I move to the center of the page. It snaps back into place. So Fresco remembers where the original position was, and we'll snap there. And I can drag this point around to wherever I want, okay? So I'm going to do something like this to make the composition a bit more interesting. And let's go ahead and hit done here. All right, and now I have a grid that I can use to start drawing. So with the default pencil, let me just make sure. Let's go to sketching. All right, I'm on pencil. I can now start to draw lines where all my lines are snapping to this grid. So if I tap drawing, just make sure drawing selected. Like I said, I was playing around with it a little bit. So there's this option, snap grid axis for drawing on the right side. Just make sure that's selected. And what that's going to do is make it so that as you draw these lines, and we can just play around a little bit so you, so you can get a feel for what this is like. OK, 
Okay, all these lines are going directly to the vanishing point. Now, with the perspective grid tool, I find that it's most useful as kind of a layout organization tool as I'm drawing. Remember, two finger tap on the screen gives you an undo. So I find it most useful and applicable when I'm creating a layout. I love sketching like sci-fi scenes and, and uh, lots of line art, for example. And if I'm trying to do a perspective that's a little bit different, then this tool is super handy. So there's a couple more settings that we can tweak here. So there's also density on the grid. I can tap the slider, slide to the left or right. So if you want more detail in your scene, we can slide that like so. We can change the opacity of the grid, okay? And we can also modify the grid color. So maybe I want red lines, okay? So I'm not confused as I'm drawing. And this way, I'm sure that I'm uh, really distinguishing between the lines that I'm drawing and the lines on the grid itself. All right, so let's start with just a simple horizon line. I'm gonna draw left to right here. Okay, and I'm, I'm kind of imagining maybe some sort of city scene, okay? So right off to this point in the background, that's gonna be where everything, everything kind of converges and fades toward, okay? And from this point, also just a little, <laughs> little tip for you, I, I'm used to drawing on paper as well as digital, but with the perspective guide tool here, what I found most uh, effective is drawing toward the point. Okay, and it's maybe a little, little hard for me to show you since you're not looking at my iPad, but if I start away from the point and draw toward the point, I find that it's a lot more, e it's a lot better than trying to draw from the point. So if I start at the point and try and draw, sometimes it'll think I'm trying to draw a straight line. If I start away from the point, then I get a much more accurate result. So hopefully that helps you as you're playing with the tool. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of establish where my uh, like sidewalk might be on this, this street. Okay, maybe something like that. And actually, I'm gonna tweak my grid one more time here. I want more of a, uh, I, want, I want a little bit lower horizon line, so. Let's go edit vanishing point. I'm just going to drag this down like so. And let's get back to drawing here. So left to right, it's a little easier as well to, it's a little easier to uh, draw these lines when you're zoomed out. So that's why I keep zooming out and in. Because um, this way I get a better sense for the overall placement of things as I'm drawing. All right. Let's get this side in here. Maybe like so. All right. And now let's get some width to our sidewalk here. All right. So again, all these lines are going to the vanishing point. Do the same thing on the other side here. Oops, I gotta turn my drawing snap back on. Looks like I inadvertently tapped that. All right, so lines that recede from us as we're drawing in perspective are going to go to that vanishing point, but maybe we have some divisions in our sidewalk. And the cool thing is, Fresco can pick up vertical and horizontal lines in this grid view as well. And again, I'm just using the basic pencil. I'm going to close this panel so I don't mistakenly tap anything. And as things fade away from us, they get smaller. Okay. If I want to get the same position over here, okay, I could just create a new layer. We'll just use this as reference. Just stroke across like so. And we'll just match these distances left to right. So maybe you're setting up for, you know, some sort of painting and you just want to make sure everything's in the right spot. All right, that's just one way to do it. So now I'm back on my original layer, like so. And we can just copy these distances down, All right? So it is quite literally like sketching in 3D in the sense that um, if you've never done perspective drawing before, it can be really intimidating, but here, we have this tool that can, can really help us. All right, so I've got my horizon line. I really should have done that on a separate layer, um, but no big deal. We can always erase a little bit if we need to. 
And let's go ahead. I'm going to do this on the new layer, actually. I'm one of those creative people who, uh, who always has like a million layers. Okay, so another line here. And if we go down like so, maybe maybe this is some building with an overhang. Okay, we can start to play with the geometry here. And go up like so. And look, we're starting to build some sort of scene. All right. So think about details. You know, maybe there's a little bit more of a gap here next to our sidewalk. We can sketch that in. Sketch up like so. It's a really wide building. So I'm going to go back. Let's go down. And right in this spot, maybe we have some sort of entryway or doorway here. And you can just keep drawing. And all these lines are being picked up by the grid tool. All right. So you can quite literally draw in 3D. Get that nice depthy drawing. Because some of this stuff is really hard to figure out, especially if you're not used to observational drawing. Okay. And perspective drawing. Let's get the tops of these buildings here. And maybe a couple more divisions. Um, in fact, maybe there's a gap right here. Okay, so you can kind of just let your imagination run wild and fill in as you go. Let's go ahead and shade. All right. Now, not everything in your scene will be perfectly aligned to the grid, right? You might want to tweak something a little bit, and that's totally fine. You can always turn the grid on or off as you go. Let's throw a nice tall building back into the horizon here. Throw some more vertical lines in. So you can kind of see how we're... We're building this up, right? Just as we go here. All right, now on the other side, we can kind of do the same thing. Just keep building as we go. A million layers, yes. I always have a million layers. And I'm terrible at naming layers, too. You can name layers in, in Adobe Fresco. And I might as well remind you now, by the way, if... If you're watching and you miss something and, and you want to be a part of a Q&A session after, you can hang out with us on the Photoshop Discord. I'll be sharing that information toward the end of our presentation today. All right. So whatever your plan is, we can kind of come in here. And you can see we're starting to build this really cool city scene, right? Uh, maybe you want to fill your canvas, maybe you want to crop it, whatever the case may be. Pretty cool. Fresco makes it really easy to draw these in. I'll just throw some, some nice vertical lines in as well. I'm going to make some tall buildings toward the back. These scenes are always fun when you've got some really, really tall buildings all the way back here really crazy perspective but really fun to do and this is all with just one brush right we're just studying playing around so you can see how you might use this tool all right so hopefully this this can help solve some of those problems for you as you're trying all right so maybe this is the start of something for you and now you always and now you want to maybe draw off the grid okay um, either that or in this case maybe i want to crop the canvas i can do that as well so we can go to change and i'm going to make this a little bit narrower let's go 11 and on my height i'm going to go nine and let's see just hit okay let's move this to where i want it so it's a, just a little tighter scene and hit done all right, so now I have a little tighter scene, um, and I'm going to have to move my perspective grid here. So if you do resize the canvas, just be aware that you may have to readjust your grid, but we can just position that where we need it, hit done, and continue drawing. So there's a lot of flexibility baked in as well. So don't freak out if you're like, oh, no, I can't, I can't change this thing. All right, maybe this is actually some structure, like a... Uh, like a viaduct or something like that in our, in our futuristic city scene here. 
So we can sketch that in. And all these little details underneath. At least straight lines to kind of guide us. And I'll show you how you can turn off the grid as well when you're ready to do that. All right. Super, super handy tool. All right, let's throw some columns in here. It's starting to look a little bit like Chicago almost. With these, these raised pathways. All right, throw a couple more lines in here. Something like that. All right, so when you're ready, you can always turn the grid off or you can turn the snap off as well. So maybe I do want something curved here, okay? Maybe maybe I do want to start drawing some people or silhouettes of people standing. So when I, when I flip that switch, I can now um, turn off... I can now turn off that snap so that I can draw lines organically or whatever shape or if I want to come in and, and do some shading somewhere as I'm planning my scene or painting or whatever um, and I don't want to be constrained to the grid okay turning that off just lets you uh, work without the constraint of the grid all right so that's one point perspective let's take a look at two point perspective all right so let's turn this off you can kind of see where we ended up, right? So you can use this tool to quickly and accurately um, draw in perspective, but I wouldn't say that it's it's meant to give you that uh, precise finished look to your drawing. Okay, so let's make a new file here. Same thing, I'm gonna go tabloid and let's sketch something a little smaller scale. So back to my grids, let's turn this on, and we're going to go two-point perspective, all right? So if I zoom out here, notice that there's two colors of lines. I've got blue and orange. So that just means that each of those lines is going to go to each vanishing point. Um, so let's go edit vanishing points. There they are. We can drag these further away from each other, all right? And that's going to make the perspective uh, less dynamic, or we can move these really close together, which is going to make the perspective more extreme. I like to have my vanishing points a little bit away from each other. All right. And I'm going to put my horizon line somewhere here. Okay. Hit done. And the reason I zoom out is so I can see the overall proportion of things and just make sure that I'm getting the, the type of perspective I want. So drawing something like a motorcycle is really hard to do if you're not familiar with perspective but again setting things up with the perspective drawing tool here can really help and I'm just gonna start by drawing a box like so just nice and rough all right so I know this is roughly the perspective I'm going for maybe something like this all right and as I'm imagining this I'm imagining We've got the seat and tank or battery pack somewhere up front here. Just like so. And I may mark some points for things like wheels. A nice little square here for where my wheel's going to go. Just a basic set up to start so we get our volumes just like so but remember every line we draw is going back to the corresponding vanishing point okay so i have enough of a block drawing i guess that's a good term for this enough of a block drawing here that now i can turn off my snap and start drawing freehand when i'm ready so now that i'm ready to draw my wheel okay or wheel shape can throw that in and maybe connect our wheel to the body with a little shape like this. This looks like a good good spot for some sort of headlight. I'm gonna make my pencil just a little bit bigger. And let's throw in just a quick shape here for 
windshield and we can start to just rough things in. But the cool thing is because I did all that work with the perspective tool, I kind of know I kind of know where to put things, right? It's kind of like like cheating, but in a good way. If I want to angle this, I can just draw from say this point to that point. We'll angle this the the body of our motorcycle shape here. And maybe just a little contour line to kind of help guide me. And we can go back and angle again, like so. Start to show a little bit of frame. And just, just to clean this up, I'm going to turn the grid off so I'm not really looking at it. But if you do want to draw with the grid, you can always do that so that um, you kind of know if things are in perspective still, right? Just so you're not too far off. All right, maybe throw in a little hint of some treads here as well. And hopefully you kind of get the picture there, all right? I'm not going to finish this whole this whole drawing because I do want to show you the three-point perspective tool as well because I think it's pretty cool, all right? So that's how I'd use the two-point perspective tool to kind of set something up and then set myself up for success when drawing, all right? So if perspective is a weakness of yours, great way to start your drawing. All right, so let's make another file here, same tabloid size. Let's go to our grids turn these on and I now have the option for three-point perspective all right for this demo I'm just gonna do something really really simple because um, there's one more one more thing I do want to show you at the end okay so here I have my three vanishing points and again I'm zoomed out pretty far and that's because I want to be able to take this third point and drag it pretty far off canvas all right that's gonna help me kind of relax my perspective a bit and then my horizon line I can bring way down, something like this. So this is gonna look similar to, say, the one-point perspective drawing if I were doing another city scene, right? Forgot to turn on my drawing snap there. Let's go ahead and hide that panel. And we can just draw our lines like so. So if I were maybe designing, <laughs> I think this is just it's, just, it's just fun to draw these city scenes, but maybe I'm designing some sort of a, a modern cabin or modern house. Again, I think this tool is fantastic for architecture. If you're someone like me who likes to kind of dream about that house you want to live in one day, All right? It's just a great tool to kind of kind of play with that a little bit. But just remember, depending on how you draw, sometimes drawing left to right is going to work better for you, and sometimes drawing right to left is going to work better for you. But if you find that it's giving you any trouble, my suggestion would be to just slow down a little bit, okay? And that's going to help you help you be a little bit more accurate. You can always erase, of course, if need be. All right, but really great way to kind of set things up and have that three-point perspective look three-point perspective is hard because again that vanishing point is so far off the page that you really have to be used to doing it to really get things looking right if you're not used to it already all right okay so we're going to wrap here in a little bit but i do want to show you one tool real quick and i hope to see you on the discord where we can play with this together you can ask me questions and we'll hang out for a bit, all right? So hopefully you get the idea here. Really quick way for you to um, bring some realism to your drawings. All right, so there's one more fun tool here, and that is if I go to my grids and I go create perspective grid, I can create a perspective grid from an image, and I'm going to go to my creative cloud libraries, and since I was at Adobe Max this year. I'm just gonna pick one of these images and I'm gonna go ahead and pick, say, this guy right here. All right, now that's imported. When I hit done, Fresco is going to create a perspective grid based on this image, all right? 
let's do that one more time. So create perspective. I'm going to select layer. And now it analyzed the photo so that when I draw, let's do this in yellow so you can see it. But when I draw lines now on a new layer, those lines are going to follow the lines in the photo. So it's pretty cool if you're trying to modify a photo, change something, really handy way to do that. All right. Well, thanks so much, everyone, for joining me for Pro Tips this morning. We're going to bounce over to Discord, and we'll be right here at bit.ly slash PS Discord. Hope to see you there. You take care now, and I'll see you in a few minutes. All right. Take care, everyone.